Hi there, my name is Brianna. We're going to go ahead and begin with our pancreatitis um, lecture. So what is pancreatitis? Um, first, let's discuss what the pancreas is. Uh, pancreas have these cells um, called the islets of Langerhans, Langer um, and they secrete insulin and glycogen. So when your sugar is low, glycogen is released. When sugar is too high or high, period, when sugar is present, period, um, insulin is released. Insulin is important because it allows for the sugar to be able to go inside of your cells to be utilized. So if you don't have insulin, you're not going to be able to be as energized or cells are not going to be working. Okay, the pancreatic tissues secrete digestive enzymes that break down carbs, proteins, and fat. Now we need that so that we can get our nutrients from our food. So what happens is those enzymes break, I mean, get activated inside the pancreas when they're not supposed to. They're supposed to wait until they're in the duodenum for they, so they can start uh, activating. But that doesn't happen, and this causes inflammation of the pancreatic tissue. Now, um, this inflammation is going to cause the organ to be hurt, so it's going to be fluffy, swollen, and it can block those ducts that come that branches out of them. And this can lead to uh, liver problems as well from the decrease of bowel secretion. Um, another thing it says, inflame. The inflammation of the pancreas blocks the ducts, which can lead to increased pressure and duct rupture. Um, yeah. Uh, causing more enzymes to activate inside pancreatic tissue. So it's just like you close the door on that pancreas, on that gateway, for um, those enzymes to be released. So when they're blocked and they're trying to come out because they sense there's fat, um, they all activate inside that tissue. Um, sorry, sorry. That is what's happening. We've got to understand the pancreas. It's like, a, it's like a food to these enzymes, too. So when they get released inside of the pancreas, they're going to break down it as like it's a fat, you know? So it, it, it's really, it really hurts. Pancreatitis can result in pancreatic inflammation, necrosis, and hemorrhage. You just got to uh, look at the fact that if the enzymes are able to digest the organ that it came from, what more else can it digest? Anything in its way. So this can lead to hemorrhaging because those vessels are going to be open due to those enzymes turning out. So um, talk about how it can result in inflammation, necrosis, and hemorrhage. Severe constant pain that radiates to the back. So these are some, uh, someone comes in and says, I'm having pain, and it radiates to my back. It's knife-like. It's at the left up quadrant. It's, not, it's like, they're more going to say mid, mid, mid gastric, but it's the, the right upper quadrant. Okay, so mid upper gastric. It's like right here, your pancreas is right here, your stomach, no, right stomach here, your pancreas like right behind it. So it's like a, it's mid epigastric, left upper quadrant, right upper quadrant, sorry. Because your, 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 your right hand has your liver, your bladder, and your pancreas is like, yeah. So it's like mid epigastric, lower, I mean, left upper, I'm sorry, right upper quadrant. Okay. That um, acute, it, it's going to be a mild. It's not going to be as severe as the chronic, you know. Uh, chronic is having all the time. Acute is just having exacerbation, made a, ate too much fat on alcohol. Um, so. So with mild, with acute mild to necrotizing hemorrhagic pancreatitis, widespread bleeding and necrosis. So when it, when those enzymes eat at that tissue, it's causing them to die. Okay. So chronic is progressive, destructive disease of inflammation and fibrosis of the pancreas. Al alcohol really causes this. So you drink a, a lot of alcohol. Alcohol. So you know, yeah, it causes that. So now we're on the uh, different types of uh, pancreatitis. So we have one chronic calcifying pancreatitis to alcohol. We all discussed alcohol does that. Two chronic obstructive pancreatitis to cholestasis. This is what gallstones. Gallstones can block that pancreatic duct because those ducts are connected. So the liver uh, duct to drain the bowel into the gallbladder is also connected to the same duct that the gallbladder has to use to secrete it back, to secrete what it has out into the um, duodenum. And then the pancreas branches its uh, duct out and they all three connect to the common bowel duct. So if a stone uh, is present, then it can it can block off the exit of those enzymes, uh, and that will cause you to have chronic uh, chronic pancreatitis because keep getting these gallstones. So autoimmune pancreatitis um our body can turn on us at any time so you know it just happens on its own so that's that idiopathic pancreatitis some you don't know the cause just have it and then hereditary just having you know avoid excessive alcohol consumption okay there's nothing wrong with some wine here and there but you know you know people drink you know like excessively so don't, don't do that eat a low fat diet why because when the body senses that we have fat you know mainly fats it's going to tell that pancreas to secrete the enzyme my pace and boom boom so it's going to digest our fat of course the other carbs and proteins and stuff um, but our main goal is to look at the fat Okay, pancreatitis risks. So if you have a biliary, biliary tract disease caused by gallstones, you know, stones can uh, impair the pressure. They're really sharp. They can tear at the lining of the duct. They can anything. Um, and they can uh, prevent, uh, okay. And they can prevent um, the enzymes from coming out because they're clogging the, that duct. Alcohol usually talk about that. Older adults, um, eh, older adults are aging, so their organs are, it's not working uh, as youthfully, excuse me. Excuse me. Older adults, their organs aren't as healthy functioning as they should because they're old, elderly, excuse me. Um, so that's a factor there. GI surgery, um, anything can happen to where scarring or an injury can happen and cause it to be inflamed and inflammation can block off the duct. Uh, hyperlipidemia, um, these, this cholesterol makes um, bowels, as, as, has a part to play in the creation or production of bowel, cholesterol, uh, I mean not bowel, stones, gallstones, cholesterol, gallstones. So if you have a lot, increased cholesterol, you're at risk for this here, okay? Genetics, mainly females are Probably get this trauma. So someone can hit you in the stomach and make it become inflamed. Okay, penetrating uh, ulcers like a uh, gastric or du duodenal, duodenal, mainly the duodenal. Uh, the ulcer can um, block the that duct due to inflammation. So a small duct that you know the fluid is uh, secreted in. Um, and if it doesn't ulcer, it can close it off due to inflammation. And then smoking and viral infections. Um, that's just obvious to understand. Okay. <clears throat> so here's what you find in pancreatitis: uh, sudden onset. A severe pain okay it's gonna hurt all right it, go, it, it goes through their body and it's like a, it radiates to the left shoulder okay the organ itself is located on the right side right up quadrant 
mid upper gastric area and that pain radiates to the left shoulder, okay? And when um, people begin to feel this, they want to be in a fetal position to, to help, and it, it, it helps them sitting upright and leaning forward. That helps the, the pain. It really hurts, okay? Um, nausea and vomiting, you just fed a bet your bottom dollar and have this. Weight loss, you're not gonna want to eat because any kind of food that we eat, it triggers the pancreas to secrete its enzymes. And if that duct is blocked due to inflammation or gallstones or ulcers, it's gonna just be eating it all again, all over and over again. And uh, this is going to cause for more release because you're like, oh, I broke it down, you know, I sense those fat, you know, th those those enzymes don't know how to communicate with the body to be able to say, hey, we need more of something. So, you know, um, you have seepage of blood stain exudate into tissue that's the pancreatic enzyme. That enzyme is basically eating your pancreas alive. It's going to like Pac Man or something, okay? So you just got to know there's going to be some bleeding, okay? And it's going to seep out because it's going to make a hole in the pancreas. Your is eating at the tissue, okay? Causing necrosis. Uh, that, that blood from those tissues being injured is going to seep out. Where else is it going to go? It can't go with hole in itself. It's, it's been ate up, you know? Uh, absent or decreased bowel sounds. This can cause a paralytic ileus. You guys understand? These enzymes are coming out of the pain. They're seeping out into the pancreas, uh, into the, the perineal cavity. So the, that perineal cavity is sterile. It's a membrane uh, covering of your organs, and those enzymes just in there, and it, this can lead to death. Okay, Hem hemorrhagic death because you know um, you're gonna have warm, moist skin, of uh, fruity breath because you have hyperglycemia because your pancreas is not gonna be able to secrete insulin. It's it's impaired. Ascites. Ooh, this is a big one. Um, pancreatitis, there's inflammation, closes off that duct, enzymes break down my pancreas. Uh, you also have to understand too that that duct is also connected with the liver and the uh, gallbladder. So if it's inflamed, closed off, the liver can't do what it's to do, so bile will back up, and then it's gonna cause a uh, portal hypertension, and this is uh, it's going to lead to, um, excuse me, uh, varices. Now keep that in mind because varices is very prone to happen, okay? Ascites is the a, a large amount of fluid, you know, in, mainly in the peritoneal cavity. You will have some varices, but we, we want to have, we want to associate pancreatitis with ascites. Now, varices come into play with it's so severe that it's, it is blocking off that bowel from being able to be secreted, you know, to where it backs up into the liver. And then you're going to have varices. But ascites is the fluid, a, a large amount of fluid that's going to be in your peritoneal cavity. And as we stated before, the pancreas is going to release its extra and because there has been a, a hole has been, it's been eaten from the inside out. So eventually that hole is going to appear and all its content is going to seep out. Okay. And this is going to cause, um, Ascites, you gotta understand, you're, you're still, your vessels are still uh, part of that organ, and if they're getting uh, cut, they're still gonna be leaking out, okay? So this can cause that, so if you wanna check for abdominal distension, okay? Tentony, due to hypocalcemia, uh, we're gonna, this is where you're gonna associate the Chavok sign, where they have the blood pressure on, um, and their hand spasms, okay? The Chavok sign is gonna be facial twitching, so you can just associate the Chavok sign with the cheeks with uh, low calcium. How, how would we be able, to, why would we be having low calcium? Well, our enzymes used to digest or to break stuff down to where we can utilize it. We don't have that in pancreatitis, it's, it's impaired. So calcium, what we need for our bones, other uh, electric, electric functions of the nervous system and, and, and more, okay? It's gonna cause this. Okay, so my labs, to so look for this. My blood amylase and lipase, these are the enzymes that's used to uh, break down the food. And if they're high, which is, they will be in pancreatitis because these enzymes are, part of, are, are the reason why your stomach, I mean your pancreas is inflamed, okay? As we stated, they activate inside of the pancreas. Uh, this causes inflammation, just a second. So yeah, your pancreas is like a food to you. It's, uh, it's enzymes. So. Um, they're going to be increased. And the presence of the fat, which is the pancreatic tissue itself, is going to cause for more enzymes to be released and it's going to further make it worse. They have increase in your white blood cells anytime that there's inflammation. So anytime you have itis on the end of, you know, white blood cells are increased. They're trying to read off bacteria and fight off, the inf off infection. Okay. Platelets uh, decreased. This is because you're going to have a lot of bleeding going on and those platelets are trying to uh, clog up those small, tiny vessels that those uh, to what's left of that organ. So it's going to be decreased. Calcium and magnesium decreased due to fat necrosis, um, as stated. Okay. Uh, blood liver enzymes increased. If biliary dysfunction is present, so uh, liver enzymes such as AST, LT, as I stated uh, before, that the pancreas, pancreatitis can lead to liver problems. Okay, and when these enzymes are increased, the liver enzymes increase, that means that liver tissue is being damaged as well, because that there might be a, a backflow of bile. Not necessarily bile backflow, but bile buildup because it can't get out due to the pancreas being inflamed, blocking the ducts. Okay, glucose is elevated. Um, of course, our pancreas secretes insulin. It's not working, so we can't get those doubles down. So it's gonna be increased. ESR elevation. ESR is just going to uh, tell you if there's inflammation going on, and of course, it's going to be increased. Uh, Echinosis of the flank, uh, these areas in your back area, excuse me, um, they're gonna be uh, bruising there because those enzymes, they're, they're like acid creatures. Acid creatures. Okay, they're going to eat at everything you know in, in sight that's like a, that's similar or is a fat, carb, protein. Your your your. Uh, all right, so we talked about the bruising of the plane, uh, peri umbilical discoloration. So they might come in with a, it's kind of like um, shingles, but it's not shingles. How it wraps around the person, it'll be to the front and in the back with, with uh, pancreatitis. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to get y'all made. So, hey, this is out the way. Hey. All right, um, now we're going to talk about the care. We want our patients to be rested. So we're going to um, have them lying down. We don't want them to eat because food stimulates the pancreas to secrete those enzymes. And we don't want that, okay? In nothing about mouth. If they need food, we might consider uh, TPN or peripheral PN internal feedings, okay? 
uh, bland high protein diet. You want a high protein to help try to build, you know, our, some organic some tissues. You know, you know, you know, rebuild something. <laughs> uh, a low fat diet because fat stimulates that a lot. You know, so that and um, frequent feedings. You want to eat small meals, but you know, frequently. You know, because you need your energy. You need your nutrients to help with your energy and repairing the tissues. Anti-emetic drugs. Um, this would make you a little nauseous. Um, you just associate this with. Uh, let's say there's a duodenal ulcer uh, that also can cause um, gastric. Uh, obstruction, so we have projectile vomiting, and as we mentioned, ulcers can affect, uh, cause pancreatitis. So, anti-emetic drugs to decrease the, one, I mean, I mean, decrease the manifestation of projectile vomiting. That's how you can associate those two together. Uh, NG2 for gastric decompression. We might need to get some food out of your stomach to prevent um, pancreas from releasing its enzymes to, you know, digest it. IV fluids, as we stated, pancreatitis can uh, lead to hemorrhaging, so you're gonna be bleeding out. That discoloration is, is blood mixed with acid and all that other stuff. So, uh, IV fluids to replace your fluids to prevent shock. Uh, hydration status, skin tugger, your urinary output. Uh, we don't want you to be uh, internally bleeding with this. That's why we want your hydration status. Um, we want to do pain management. We want you to give you morphine, hmm? antibiotics, um, because it's, it, there is inflammation. Um, you know, it is can, can cause by virus, but anytime there's inflammation that we're itis, you want to give an antibiotic, okay? Uh, histamine receptor antagonist, um, so it's just want to decrease the amount of um, stomach acids in your um, stomach, okay? We're not going to really be digesting, it's going to help prevent GERD, you know, because we're not really going to be eating like that. So we want to get that, decrease that. Um, proton pump inhibitors are the same thing as um, the pain, I mean, the histamine receptor, so it decreases stomach acid. Okay, and then we have our pancreatic enzyme, pancreatic taste, that's going to help digest our fat for us so that the pancreas won't have to. And you want to sprinkle this on each, each time you eat, sprinkle it on your food, okay? Because we need something to break down our fat. Our stomach intestines or our stomach can't uh, absorb the fat without it being broken. Down. And the pancreas is the one responsible for that. Okay, so we get those sprints for that. Uh, some procedures that can happen for uh, pancreatitis: ERCP, um, and basically they're just going to make an incision to uh, remove um, like gallstones that's causing pancreatitis. Um, necrosectomy: they're going to remove the dead tissue. Do I already have pancreatitis and it made it worse? You know, it was bad. Has some dead tissue. They can go remove it because if you keep that tissue in your body, it's going to turn to gangrene. So you don't want to think about that surgery. Uh, sphincterectomy um, makes pancreatic duct sphincter larger, that's so that gallstones can pass easily through it. Uh, row in X, row in Y <coughs> surgery. It puts the pan pancreatic content right into the genome. Okay, so instead of it, your food having to, um, your food having to go uh, do the duodenum to get uh, those enzymes to break down its content, it's going to go automatically into the um, the duodenum. Okay, so we don't have to worry about the pancreas feeling that stimulation to secrete those enzymes. Okay, it's complications when you have hypovolemia due to the fact that those acid bugs are eating holes in your organ and seeping out its content, blood, all that stuff. Um, pancreatic infection, um, abscess. If you have an abscess inside of your pancreas, it's known as abscess. If it's outside, it's pseudocyst. Um, but when um, Destruction of tissues happen, inflammation comes, um, a bacteria can thrive when your body is weak. So, you know, uh, abscesses can form, which is a collection of pulse bacteria and, uh, you know, white blood cells, blood, you know, so that can get infected, you know. So, we don't want that because uh, you can get sick, of course. Uh, so, we want to drain those abscesses before they rupture. That's the main thing. But these abscesses can rupture and cause peritonitis, which is life threatening. So, we need to drain that. Type 1 diabetes, we don't have our pancreas to create our insulin for us. So, um, sugar can go high, okay? Left lung effusions due to the hypovolemia and due to where the location of the pancreas is, our lungs are really huge, okay? And so they sit on top of that diaphragm, but those enzymes are going to be eating away everything. They're not caring of what it, you know, what they should destroy. So this can cause collection of fluid to come into the uh, lung space and cause a thorough effusion. And you hear that little rough stuff um, on the oscillation. This can cause pneumonia. First of all, you have back, might have some bacteria in the exudate that's causing that thorough effusion, okay? Uh, Coagulation deficits, um, when all this tissue is bleeding out and your platelets that you do have are trying to clog those and the liver secrete whatever left it can, this, it's going to take a little time for the, that liver to make those proteins for clotting again. So, um, the I see your risk for this. Okay, also multi-system organ failure. First of all, we don't have insulin uh, to get the sugar in. Then we have coagulation deficits when, you know, things are turn for worse. So, organs won't be able to get uh, energy to be able to move, I mean, cooperate, you know, you know what I'm saying, function. Um, so, we need, we need our pancreas. When protein levels are down, content is not being held in the vessels. So up to six liters of water can be third space. This can cause shock. This is very important. Uh, we're not able to uh, break down our protein due to the pancreas being down. Protein is very important in keeping our, our the water and all the content inside the vessels, other than blood, inside of the uh, vessel. Okay? So when we don't have protein, you know, think of it as albumin. So let me rephrase that. We have things in our vessels that need to stay. We got uh, blood, white blood cells, water, electrolytes. What I'm really getting on is that fluid in there, the fluid part that, uh, that makes the fishes float. Okay? Protein helps keep that in. If we're not able to get that from our diet, um, it's going to be able. It's going to cause our fluid to shift outside the vessels into our tissues, and we're going to have some swelling. So look for your client for swelling, and this is called. This can cause shock. Okay, we're not keeping our content inside our vessels. However, how is the blood going to be able to circulate and perfuse tissues with blood? But it has no no current to fall through with. You know what I mean? Like an uh, ocean and your blood cells and particles in it are deficient. If we don't have that ocean, stuff's going to be stagnant, clotting. Things are not going to be working right. Complications, uh, peritonitis. That uh, if you have an abscess on the pancreas due to uh, injury, you know, pulse and bacteria buildup, it can rupture. Okay. Also, without having an abscess, if those enzymes eat away uh, deep enough, if that is going to cause the tissue to bleed, and that blood can seep into the uh, perit peritoneal cavity, bacteria can migrate, and you get peritonitis. Okay. Check for a rigid board-like abdomen. That's the hallmark sign because we got contents inside this little this um this sealed area that's sterile, and now we got something inside it's going to be rigid-like. Okay. Abdominal distension, of course. Nausea, vomiting, uh, rebound tenderness. It's going to hurt when you touch it and put your hands. On. When you touch it and you take your hand off. 
it's gonna hurt. When you touch, it's not hurt. When you take it off, it hurts really bad. That's rebound tenderness. Tachycardia. You gotta understand. It's like putting, getting up some poo, opening your stomach like a trunk, slapping that poo in there, and it's closing it back. That bacteria is able to eat away faster than it would if you were to just eat some poo off your hand. Okay? This stuff, bacteria has is leaked inside of the peritoneal cavity. Also, when think of it like this too. If the pancreas enzymes is eating at the pancreas and it's able to penetrate through other organs like the GI, the large intestines, which houses a bunch of bacteria, they're able to, my, oh my goodness, okay, this causes this peritonitis. We're going to place in a semi fallow position that's going to help release some pain, okay, and promote drainage. Uh, monitor because they're going to be on a they're going to be on an ng uh, suction to suction drain um a drain excuse me to get this matter out of the peritoneal cavity monitor your rest status this can lead to hypovolemia you know, you know and um you can you're not going to be able to get blood to your lungs within this here without your fluids in your vessels uh you want to give oxygen you know that the possibility of not going to shock we need oxygen um turn them to a comfortable position because it's going to hurt they like to be in a fetal position here have them cough and deep breathe okay it's going to help with oxygen consumption um they might be on a mechanical uh, ventilator here because as we mentioned the pancreas enzymes and sea valve is contents into it, it can go into cause the third space and cause you to go into third spacing okay because all your fluid is, your protein is not being absorbed can't keep coming in the vessel so they can seek to make further fusions on the lungs and it's going to cause difficulty breathing um NG suction, okay. Uh, I was they use a drain too, but they're gonna suction the content out of your peritoneal cavity. When you go to choose a suction for this specific procedure, you want to a double loom, you don't want a single loom, double, remember for NCLEX. You want to keep the person patient, nothing by mouth, and you want to give antibiotics, and you want to monitor for fluid and electrolytes, because they're gonna be hypovolemic, they're not gonna be able to uh, digest you know their food because pancreas is down. So you wanna watch for that. Also, bleeding due to deterioration of the bowel. Okay, so because in peritonitis, it's gonna be eating that was gonna be eating away the bacteria too. Okay, we'll talk about um so you wanna observe for Rectal bleeding, you know, you know, gotta come out somewhere, you know. Um, bright red blood, okay. Check the vitals, um, labs, hematocrit, hemoglobin, and collection factors are gonna be down. Food and electrolyte imbalance, not gonna be absorbing, able to intake our food like we should. So watch for that. Abscess and fistula formation, um, definitely be abscess. Um, but fistulas can form any tissue that is being uh, inflamed, healed, inflamed, healed, and too fast, and cause those little ducts to be created to where its content can or bacteria can go elsewhere. Um, due to destruction of the bowel, with, uh, leading to infection, okay. Fistula are Tunnels created by severe injury caused by our own immune system, and this can cause a UTI. Okay, these can, especially dealing with Crohn's, okay, make those things toxic. So let's say your pancreas um, secretes enzyme, and it's you know it causes necrosis of that area there because if it's able to eat the pancreas itself, it's able to eat other organs. Okay, so if it's leaking into your peritoneal cavity, you, it can eat away at your uh, colon, your your large intestines, small intestines, and when they die, and they're not they're just part, or part of it dies, and it's just sitting there, it can swell up with all that water that it's in, and it can burst. This is called toxic megacolon, and this is a medical emergency. Okay, because you know it's on your risk for when it's when it's really huge, it can burst. Medical emergency. Okay. So that wraps up our presentation for pancreatitis. Thank you again.